maybe we should put on the table uh, why Ferrostal, uh, German company, sold four or seven submarines to uh, Greece. And why were they found guilty of corruption in Germany for that? How much money was that going from uh, Greek taxpayers to the German economy? Well, or we can ask ourselves, no, but actually this is the main discussion. So in trying to see you were a socialist government, you had three, four or five decisions that made this situation, that's a trap. That's to undermine and to, to shadow the real origin and the systematic problems of the, the, the situation, of the crisis. When you have the majority of our main companies having her, their fiscal headquarters in the Netherlands, they are paying the taxes there for the social services of the, uh, of the people of Netherlands instead of paying taxes here. And if they don't, know, don't pay taxes here, being companies here, obviously we have less fiscal revenue, further deficit, further debt. So we need to see the, it's the system that it's not working and it's unbalancing. When you say that the country needs to be competitive, Okay, Germany is competitive. Of course, they are hiring, they hired like 25,000 engineers in Portugal that we paid for our taxes for training. And now, of course, they are hiring very cheap engineers to become more and more productive and paying to their social security system. But yeah. we need to say this to the people. If you are talking about the demonstration of the 15th September, uh, you are forgetting one major thing, uh, the origin of the demonstration. It's not really, uh, you need to understand that there was a decision of the government a few days before that was the, the driving force of that demonstration. And until that announcement by the Prime Minister of increasing the contributions for social security of the workers and decreasing the contribution of the companies, before that announcement, uh, you didn't have demonstrations of that size and there was a wide social and political consensus in Portugal in order to fulfill the main objectives. Uh -huh. But that announcement was a disgrace by the Prime Minister. He made it on TV without any social consultation, without talking to nobody. And people felt that it was completely unfair, adding to all the sacrifices, transferring money from the workers to the companies to finance the social security system. Uh -huh. The first problem of this discussion is when you start the question by do you feel the people is represented? Which people? The people in the street, the citizens. Which part of the people? Which kind of and people? The societies tr today are much more stratified. Uh, you cannot say the people, like if you are talking about the majority of the country. Uh, what's the, what's the, well, yeah, but what's the scientific basis? Uh, how many? What do, you, what, do you see, what do you see in the streets? I'm sorry. Yeah, about the numbers that we have in the newspaper. You, you saw one demonstration on, in September well, 15, actually, and then and one of one million, and then you saw several demonstrations that were um, organized by CGTP, which is a strong uh, union from the Communist Party, um, and that's it. Uh, again, we, and again, people have all the reasons to make demonstrations, uh, but the numbers do not add to your argument on saying that they don't feel represented. I would say that many people don't feel represented. Uh, and that's quite normal when you have a society that it's moving very fast, uh, m more and more fragmented on interests, on groups of interests, uh, of movements, and less aligned with uh, all ca catch all parties. Uh, so it's normal that that fragmentation collides with the old structure of big parties. 
but that's a norm. I would, the only thing I fight very much here in Portugal is to make it a dramatic situation. It's a normal social and political evolution that the parties need to understand and becoming a little bit more platforms where they get inside the movements and less monolithic structures. But again, we need to go step by step and not to dramatize like to say that this is the end of the political system. The end of the political system, uh, first of all, is get, getting into power by lying. Uh, that's what our prime minister did and what your prime minister did before the elections during the campaign. They, say, they said things that immediately they corrected a few months uh, after. That's that is the problem, and that's the, the stronger threat to the political and the democratic system.